Brother is convinced his wife cheated because their daughter looks just like her and nothing like him, so he's demanding a paternity test and threatening to file divorce. I, 20M, have a brother called Jack, 29M, who is married to his wife Amy, 26F, about two years ago they had their first child, Lisa. On our side of the family, we all look extremely alike. Both of our parents have brown hair and brown eyes, so do me and Jack. Amy on the other side is from Norway and looks very different, she has blonde hair and blue eyes and generally has a very Scandinavian look to her, opposed to our very American look. So to what I thought was no one's surprise, of course Lisa got features from her mom. They look pretty much identical, and it seems like they look more alike as time passes on. This was all fine from my understanding, I don't know why it even would be a problem. But about one year ago my brother started telling me about how his co-worker has a daughter that looks like the female version of him. He said that everyone said that the firstborn, especially if it is a daughter, is the spitting image of their father. I did not find it that weird, as I had heard that before, but I think it is kind of obvious that genetics works weird and in different ways, and what is common is not always what happens to everyone. I told him just that, that genetics works in surprising ways sometimes. However as time went on he started saying more stuff like this, like asking me where I thought Lisa got her blonde hair from, which obviously was from Amy. He did this with other stuff, like the nose, the eyes, the little mannerisms Lisa has. It was extremely obvious it was from Amy, which I always told him. Now I have found out that he is demanding that they take a paternity test as he is extremely sure that Lisa is not his. Amy is extremely distraught by this and has tried to explain to him that Lisa is his, that she just got stuff from Amy and that happens. He is threatening her with divorce if she doesn't agree to do a paternity test, as that would be his confirmation on that she cheated. She got to our parents' house and broke down, telling us all this. Our parents have texted him and called him, I have too, but he is now angry with us too because we are taking a cheater's side, his words. She and Lisa is staying with us and she is extremely confused on where all this is coming from. I called my brother in yesterday and this time he picked up the phone. I managed to have a conversation with him and asked him why, if he had any evidence that Amy ever did cheat or why he thought so. He basically told me that he did not have any evidence but he knew and was a 100% sure on that. I asked him why and how. He told me that firstborn daughters always behave, look and are a carbon copy of their father, but Lisa is not even remotely like that. He said that if it isn't like that, then Lisa would at least have some features from him, which she don't. I was getting angry at him because it just seemed so weird to even come to that conclusion, I told him that he was an idiot for all off this and that he will regret all this later on. He hung up and is even madder at all of us, saying that Amy has manipulated us all and that we can't crawl back to him when the truth is out. I have not told Amy that this is the reason or that I have talked to him, because I don't think she will react that well to hearing this. However, my parents are saying that it was extremely unnecessary off me to behave like that when I got talking to him, as this may have been our chance to have a mature and serious conversation with him. So Ada for how I reacted? Comments, she underscore who underscore nits, he told me that firstborn daughters always behave, look and are a carbon copy of their father, this is evidence of a delusional belief system that's been reinforced by pseudo-scientific clickbait websites. Rather than fight with him over his delusion, it would be better for Amy to burst his bubble with real science. He actually doesn't need permission to do a test so make him do it all himself. Do the swabs and mail them off so he can't create a new delusion that the test was wrong or fake. Your brother might actually be mentally ill. Or just dumb and naive enough to believe the internet. Old underscore society underscore 7861, this is what makes me think it's just delusion. If I thought there was a chance a kid wasn't mine, I'd just do a DNA test in secret. You're going to blow up your marriage without being sure? Procrastinating Zhu IQ too, if he's dumb enough to not understand very simple genetics, he is too dumb to figure out how to get a paternity test done. Fantastic underscore beans, I can almost guarantee that this is projected guilt and that he cheated on her at some point. Now he's reaching so hard he's gonna dislocate a shoulder. Biddle's one stubborn name, someone should imply that if the first child is supposed to look like the father, does that mean Lisa isn't his first child, and watch the mental gymnastics. Beard man Michael, NTA your brother is dumber than a box of rocks. Or this could be a mental crisis brought on by some unacknowledged insecurities that he has. Either way, I don't think there is anything wrong with how you reacted. Working mushroom underscore 456, totally agree, your brother is an idiot spouting misinformation and spiraling badly. My nice is an exact copy of my sister whereas I looked nothing like my mom until I was 20. Everyone is different and if your brother wants to blow up his marriage by making false generalizations then I don't know what else to call him but an idiot. Clearly he's got some bad friends or is projecting from his own infidelity. NTA. No reflection 5401. Yep, my daughter is my little mini-me. She doesn't have even a hint of my husband in her, my coloring, features, build, temperament, the lot. My son is a perfect blend of both of us. Genetics are just like that sometimes. It's not like Op's niece came out looking like the milkman or the guy next door, she just looks like her mom. Op's brother needs to sort his shit out. Mad wife ook, my brother's eldest is the spitting image of me, her auntie. 
His youngest is very like my maternal family. The middle daughter is a complete blend of the two, skinny shrimp like her dad, his mannerisms but has the hair color, eye color, and facial features of her mom. You can see the similarities between the eldest and the youngest, but the middle looks completely different from her sisters while at the same time the most like her parents. Genes are weird. Edit, I have seen a few comments about this and thought I would try my best to answer, but since I am just hearing about this from Amy and I was not there during the whole ordeal, I don't have 100% off the answers and they are basically just what she has told me. He basically sat her down, told her that he was going to be honest with her. Then he said that he did not think Lisa was his, that he basically knew she cheated on him and that he would do a paternity test. He did not go behind her back and do it, why I can't answer. They then had a fight and I don't know who left first, I don't know exactly what was said, all I know is that my brother is at a friend of his and Amy came here. Amy is not upright refusing the test either, but when he brought it up she was extremely hurt by him insinuating that she would cheat on him. She has been with my brother for 7 years, they had a seemingly great relationship up until this. She is mostly hurt by the accusations and that her relationship is most likely never going to be the same. She told me that the last couple years now just feels like a lie, that he for the most part thought she was cheating. Edit 2, thanks again, I have tried reading everything both in the comments and messages. The test will happen, I will update in the meantime if anything happens that is worth updating for, if not I will try my best to just update with the results when they are done. Thanks again for everything. Commenter, does your brother have any mental illness because that seems like such a huge mental leap and his reaction seems very out of touch with reality. When the test is done and it shows she is his daughter you better believe his wife will file for divorce. Oop, I know that he was diagnosed with anxiety disorder in his early teens, but he apparently got better when he was about 20. I did not know about it or really have any recollection of it since I was very young during this time and they kept it away from me. But apparently it was really bad anxiety, it don't seem too far off to assume it could relate to what is happening now. Commenter, why didn't he just do the test himself? Why does his wife have to be the one to test their kid, he'd need to submit his DNA anyway. Oop, he told Amy he would do a paternity test as he believed he cheated and that Lisa was not his, he said that he would do it but he wanted to be truthful to her. I don't really know how everything went, but they have not seen each other since the fight. Update, hi everybody who will read this update I am sorry for the wait, but I hope I can answer it all. First things first, the paternity test was done and the results got back, Lisa is my brother's, no doubt there. So some of you thought that my brother was cheating on Amy, and from what we all have gathered he is not cheating on her. Now to what drove him to this point, we think we know. I mentioned in a comment that my brother had anxiety when he was younger, now I know that anxiety was more severe than I ever thought. It is most likely what happened again, his anxiety has mainly been pointed towards other people. He doesn't trust that they want what's best for him, one example they told me was that he apparently refused to sit beside someone in classrooms, because he thought they would take their pens and stab him. This is just one example. He also believed that people were conspiring against him, especially close friends. So what happened was that one of his co-workers had brought their daughter to the office one day, and everyone talked about how his daughter looked like him if he was a girl and 30 years younger. After this they apparently started talking about genetics in the lunchroom for some time, like almost every dad showed pictures of their daughters who looked just like them, all moms showed pictures of their sons who looked just like them. Of course this was not the case for everyone, but for many. This apparently sparked something in my brother, he started obsessing over genetics, and what confirmed his thoughts was that brown eyes and hair should outweigh blue eyes and blonde hair. He fed into these thoughts and obsessed over them for almost a year. Also for why he just didn't do the paternity test, he wanted to show Amy how easy it was to not keep secrets. He thought that if he was honest about knowing about her being unfaithful and being honest about wanting a paternity test, it would be easier for her to come clean. It was also so that he could walk out of it knowing he did everything 100% right, while she did not. Amy does not want a divorce right now at least, and my brother should be extremely thankful for that. They are going to both couples therapy and individual therapy, Amy for things unrelated and Jack for well, all of this and his issues with anxiety. They are going to live separate for a while, but they are very insistent on making this work. Jack is not completely fine, and while we do want to trust him we think that the answer is from the paternity test is just breaking things down for him. We have tried to get him into therapy as quickly as possible, but we couldn't find any available appointments until next week, which is still quicker than expected. He is still very sorry for all of this, he had a very emotional reaction to seeing the test and he kept telling Lisa that you know daddy loves his little girl when he was here. If there still are questions you want answers to I will try to answer them as best as I can. Edit, I talked with my parents about it this week because to be it sounded like something more severe slash worse than just anxiety from what I have read. But they told me that it was just anxiety, that it portrays different in different people and that he just happens to be one of those affected by it more. I have never suffered from anxiety, so I kind of just took their word for it. If it is something more severe I want him to get the help that he deserves, I will talk to Amy about this because she has also questioned if it is just anxiety. Comments, Permanent UN, I really hope you can get your brother into neuropsychological testing for a confirmed diagnosis. That doesn't sound like anxiety. It sounds like it's a different diagnosis with anxiety as a symptom. 
that can be dangerous to others, and possibly more so to your brother depending on his guilt and depression levels. Please get him help. Throwaways 836252 op, I thought about that, I asked my parents if it was possible it could be something worse than anxiety. But they have been very insistent on that it is just a severe case of anxiety, I have never experienced that myself but from what I have read, what he experiences sounds a lot more complex than anxiety. Birdlover666, I'm sorry but this he apparently refused to sit beside someone in classrooms, because he thought they would take their pens and stab him goes way way beyond the bounds of general anxiety. Bro literally blew up his entire marriage due to his paranoid delusions. Your brother needs serious help. Kidney stew, exactly what I thought. Like that's not just anxiety, that's straight up paranoia and he really needs to address it. I just hope he does. Mapavlikovich, my thoughts as well. These are outright paranoid delusions. Best guess is that the parents were in denial so it went untreated until it escalated to this. Lulu F, but they told me that it was just anxiety, that it portrays different in different people and that he just happens to be one of those affected by it more. That doesn't sound like anxiety at all. My brother is a schizophrenic and before his first psychotic break he was acting very similarly to Oop's brother. Watching someone's mind degrade is heartbreaking. My brother has terrifying visual and auditory episodes. He thinks he sees a black shadow in the corner of his apartment that follows him around and screams at him when he tries to sleep. Even when he's taking his medication and his mind is calmer, he still thinks it's there. It's so fucking hard to see him suffer. I'm a little worried about the parents. I hope that they take this seriously because the brother needs help desperately. Sometimes it's difficult to accept a diagnosis in a loved one, especially when it concerns mental health. Modern wonder, verdict, removed before verdict rendered I find it difficult to believe the parents are taking this seriously. If Oop has all the factual information. It sounds to me like he's never gotten the help he needs. I've been around a few different blocks and it sounds like the family is hiding shit or just obstinately anti-psych. There's no mention of medical intervention, which I would be pushing for with his paranoia and apparently at times delusional behavior. I've been fucked over by improper diagnoses, I get it. For the parents, though, for my own dog I will literally push until I get acceptable resolution. They are either lying or they never pushed. In Chermilf, a lot of parents do not take the mental health of their sons seriously at all. It's a compounding problem. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Caught my fiancé cheating on me with her toxic ex-boyfriend after she lied about working late, so I ended our engagement in front of everyone at our Thanksgiving dinner. My, 28 male, fiancé, 26 female, and I met at a bookstore about 3 years ago. She was working there at the time and I was going to pick up some new books. She was stocking the shelves and I saw her and thought she was cute. I asked her for some help looking for a particular book and we walked off together. We started talking and I asked her for her number and things took off from there. I proposed to her about 2 years into the relationship. I knew from the moment that we met that she was something special. I knew I wanted to be with her and I saw a future with her. Our relationship was great from the start, except for a few issues that we had to work through based on her past relationship. Her ex-boyfriend, who we'll call Ben, was her first serious relationship. They were together for 7 years and throughout the entirety of it, he was cheating on her and treating her like garbage. She was single for about a year before we met. During that time she said she did a lot of self-discovery and healed from the relationship, though it didn't always seem like that to me. I never gave her any reason to suspect that I was cheating on her and I treated her like a queen. The only issue that ever came up was when she started to feel insecure about herself. The relationship she had with Ben took a toll on her and there were times when she thought that she wasn't good enough to be with someone like me. Ben was a sleaze. He couldn't hold down a job, he was sleeping with anybody that would pay him any attention, and he berated her for the smallest things. I didn't do any of that. I had a great job, she was the only woman for me, and I made sure she knew how wonderful I thought she was. I would treat her with respect and she wasn't used to it. I knew she had a lot of trauma from that relationship and I did everything in my power to help her get through it, but I could only do so much. It was on her to take care of her trauma and recover from it. As much as I loved her, it didn't seem like she was willing to take those steps. I hate even saying it because it sounds so insensitive, but it's the truth. I suggested that she go to therapy or see a counselor, but she would tell me that she couldn't afford it. I even offered to pay for it and she didn't want to do that. All I could do was hope the situation would get better over time. I worked a regular 9-to-5 job in the office, and she was working at the bookstore. Her hours were less regular than mine. Some days she would go in around 10am and some days she would go in around 2pm I was always at work when she was leaving, regardless of the time, but I always picked her up afterward because she didn't have a car. Because she took public transportation, we shared our locations on our iPhone so I could always make sure she was safe. It's not something I normally would have done in a relationship, but she had several run-ins with creepy passengers on buses and it made her nervous. I also like having that peace of mind. Around the holidays, with Black Friday coming up, she was picking up a lot of extra hours preparing for Black Friday sales. Part of that included optional late-night hours that allowed her to prepare new displays and unpack the large quantities of inventory the store received before the sales. When she did that, I didn't see her for dinner or anything like that. 
I offered to pick her up when she was off her shifts, but she told me that she didn't want to disturb me so she just planned on taking Uber. I didn't want her to get into some strange man's car in the middle of the night and have something happen, so I stayed up for her regardless. I told her that was the plan, but she insisted on me not picking her up because she didn't want to bother me. The first night that she was gone, I checked her location around 11 o'clock when she was supposed to be clocking out and I saw that she was at the bookstore. I could see the location updating every few minutes when I checked it to show was in a car on her way home. Everything looked good, so I was less worried. One week, she told me that she was only scheduled to work late three days, but on Thursday, she told me that she would be working late again. I wasn't immediately suspicious about that because it seemed like a normal enough thing. I figured maybe another coworker called out or decided they didn't want the extra hours after all. That night, I did what I always did when she worked late. I was up and around the time she was supposed to be coming home, I looked at her location. Only that time, she wasn't at work. She was at Ben's house. Right away I was wondering what she was doing there. Surely, if she had to go over to his house for anything she would have told me about it. It feels silly to admit it, but I didn't even think that an affair was possible. It never would have crossed my mind that she would be cheating on me with him. I waited for the location to change for about half an hour, and it didn't. It wasn't moving at all. I felt weird looking at her location without her knowing, so I waited about 10 more minutes until she would normally be home and I called her. She didn't answer. After that, I started to worry. She never ignored my calls or messages. I knew that Ben didn't have her best interests in mind whatsoever. From what she described, he was never violent with her, but he didn't want her to leave him. I ran through countless different scenarios in my head about what could have been happening. None of them involved her cheating on me. After the location hadn't moved and she didn't answer my calls, I decided I was going to go see for myself what was happening. I drove over to the house and saw a car in the driveway, so I assumed that Ben was still there. When I checked my fiancé's location, she was still inside the house. I approached the front door but before I could get there, I heard music coming from the other side. It was the type of music you would have on a sex playlist. It was then that I realized nothing nefarious was happening, and she could have willingly gone there to have an affair. I was frozen for a moment, I didn't know exactly what to do. I had a pretty good idea about what was happening in the house, but I figured if I knocked they could play it off as something that it wasn't. I ended up going back to my house and waiting there. My fiancé didn't come home for about another 45 minutes after I got back. I just rolled over and pretended to sleep while she got ready for bed. I asked her about work the following morning, and she told me that it was fine. She even made up a story about some drama that happened. She was lying to my face. She also told me that the late night hours were going to be extended for a couple more weeks. I figured that she was lying about that too. She was preemptively covering for the time she was going to be spending with her ex. That same night, she ended up going back over to her ex's house again. I knew it was happening and I was already preparing to break off the engagement. However, I didn't want to just calmly break it off. I wanted to get some kind of revenge against her. I thought about it for about a week when she was visiting him instead of working and I came up with something. We were going to be hosting a friend's giving dinner at our house and I figured there was no better time to tell everybody about her affair than then. I almost considered not doing it then because I didn't want to ruin the mood, but toward the end of the meal, I stood up to make a toast. Everybody thought I was going to toast a friendship and my loving fiancé, but I ended the engagement right there. My fiancé was shocked when I made the announcement. I think she thought it was a joke at first, but it definitely wasn't. I elaborated by explaining that I knew she was going over to her ex-boyfriend's house. My fiancé tried to defend it, but she couldn't come up with a good excuse. I just told her that the engagement was off and that she could go stay with Ben if she wanted to be with him so badly. After that, she ran off to the bedroom to go and hide away from everybody because she was humiliated. Everybody else packed their things and left shortly after. When they were all gone, she came back out and yelled at me for humiliating her in front of all of our friends. She told me that she was sleeping with him again and that was all that it was. She tried to make it seem like because there was nothing emotional involved it wasn't an affair. I didn't believe that there weren't emotions involved. They were together for a long time and she stayed with him through a lot of stuff, she had to have had serious feelings for him to put up with as much as she did. I told her that I wanted her to get out of my house and I gave her a week to gather all of her things and leave. She did end up going back to Ben. I think they're still together, but he definitely hasn't changed his ways so she must be miserable with him. All of the friends that were with us were definitely on my side. Some of them have tried to make excuses for her behavior by telling me that she might have been manipulated into getting back with him, but I still don't care what the reasoning behind it was. She cheated on me with a man who treated her like garbage and I just couldn't be with a cheater.